Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT. Time for another Twitter thread. We are just gonna keep doing these until the sun explodes. Today we're talking about a weird part of Yu-Gi-Oh. We all know the game, we all know the intricacies and the mechanics, we all have read at least three cards, but one thing you might not be as familiar with is the market surrounding it. Yu-Gi-Oh cards can get very expensive, and because of that there's a lot of money to be made by buying low and selling high. That said, individuals whose entire job is buying low and selling high aren't always the best at it. And as a result, we have some buyouts today that were very ill-informed. Now, if you're unfamiliar, a buyout is when someone with a huge amount of money buys every single copy of a card on uh, trading websites like eBay and TCG Player, thereby driving the price way up so they can then offload the card for a lot of money when they arrive. Now, this only works if the card is actually playable and there's demand for it. So, the one that I posted was Snake Rain. Snake Rain has been bought out, I want to say like 10 or 15 times over the course of its lifespan. Maybe the most bought out card in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. And you can see why just by reading the text on it. This is theoretically five foolish burials. In a format that's absolutely dominated by Chaos Ruler, it's not hard to see that choosing the cards you're sending might be a little more powerful. There's only one problem. Konami has never never printed a good reptile archetype. And as a result, every time a new reptile archetype is spoiled, Snake Rain shoots way up, it's absolutely vanished from markets, and then three or four days later they come crawling back on their lack of hands and knees. Oh my god. The reply to this one, YOU! Special mention to this little goofer who got bought out to the moon back years before Halk was ever revealed. Little did people know it would be another three years before we ever got it in the TCG, and by then Wonder Magician was a bulk hollow in BLRR. Wonder Magician makes sense as a card to buy out. There's not a lot of other cards that do exactly what they do, and it has a pretty clear parallel in a playable card in Formula Synchron. That said, no. It was awful. Despite commanding a huge price tag and vanishing from TCG Player a couple of times over the course of its lifespan, it wasn't playable until you could scythe lock, and by that point we had the common. When Scrap Raptor first came out, this card shot extremely high. Now, this one is pretty understandable. Scrap Raptor was a card that was enabled to buy Scrap Chimera almost specifically. The card had one printing, and it was a medium-high rarity. It went overnight from about a 25-cent card to a $30 one, as speculators brought out the entire stock. The problem was, why do you think that Konami wouldn't just reprint this in an OTS? If they're printing a card like Scrap Raptor, they're going to try and make Chimera available. And they did. Coder says, The day Aroma Seraphy Jasmine got announced, this card was bought out because it was part of this crazy consistent plant FTK combo. Went from 50 cents to $20 a copy because it had a single print. Anyway, it got banned before Jasmine came out, so it never got to see play. Cool. Oh, here's what I'm responsible for. Uh, Skyhawk jumped onto my channel one week to talk about playing Gila, Saurus, and Dinosaur. And his speech was so moving that people immediately bought out this card, which actually only has two or three printings. Um, the card remained like a $5 common for a little while, uh, but I think it has gone back down since. Like a week after Splite was unveiled, people went, wait, we can make gigantic Splite a 7200 attack beater and spiked Cat Shark up to $20 because it only had one printing. Yeah, I'm not going to be playing Cat Shark in Splite. Where the fuck is this card's nose? Wait a minute. Grave of the Super Agent Organism has been bought out a couple of times. It's a floodgate with a very strange effect, and if anyone ever sniffs out that it's meta-relevant, basically all copies disappear immediately just because there's nothing that can really fill the same niche. Farfa recently posted a BA build that includes this card, so it is once again over $15. Ah, and we have reached the funniest one, Ancient Leaf. Ancient Leaf is a common card that's not worth the stock that it's printed on, but for a short period of time it was about $10. Why? Well, a Twitter egg account showed up and claimed that Master Rule 5 was coming. There were a ton of changes designed to slow the game down. For some reason we were going to start with 12,000 and Konami was not going to ban an equivalent card to Pot of Greed. Why people fell for this, I don't understand. Anyway, I have a playset of this card. Lot of buyouts as a result of Master Rule 4. So when Master Rule 4 came out, um, there was the announcement of the extra monster zone, which was the only zone in which monsters from the extra deck could be placed. At the time, there was no indication that there would be an additional zone on the field. So we all kind of expected it would just be a main monster zone. For that reason, all of the cards that prevent your opponent from using a monster zone shot way the hell up overnight. They were almost universally bought out. Among them are Zany Z, 
Zebra, which allows you to blank one unused monster zone, and Senate Switch, which allows you to switch monsters from one monster zone to another, thereby freeing up your EMZ. Of course, Konami would later errata most of these cards to say main monster zone, thereby nullifying all of the buyouts. So, Lunalite Fusion is an impressively good card. If your opponent controls a monster that was summoned from the extra deck, like Shadal Fusion, you can use a Lunalite monster from your deck as material for a Lunalite Fusion. This card was bought out overnight after a Lunalite deck topped a YCS. The only problem? The deck was not playing Fusion. It was literally just people saw the word Lunalite on a top 16 sheet, went to TCG player, picked the most powerful looking Lunalite card in a vacuum, and bought it out, only to later realize it was one of the few Lunalites that was not being played. Amazing buyout. This one is interesting. So Spell Chronicle has a card effect that is almost impossible to parse. Because it does something so foreign to Yu-Gi-Oh, it is actually really hard to tell if it is good or not. Uh, community consensus is that it's not good even remotely, except for a couple of really niche applications at decks like Witchcrafter. But... Almost a decade ago at this point, a group of Yugi tubers and pro players thought it would be interesting to see if they could stage a buyout. There was a lot of on-the-ground grassroots movements uh, dedicated to basically convincing players that an unplayable card was playable to see if they could affect the price of it. And in fact, they could. This card did get pretty expensive before pretty much everyone figured out that it was all a huge ruse. The modern day version of the Spell Chronicle thing is pack gaslighting everyone into thinking that Predaplant was good. Ghost Fairy Elphobia. When Flunder was announced, this thing was described as a spicy tech. Once per turn, you can reveal a wind monster in your hand. Until the end of your opponent's next main phase one, monsters with a level higher than the revealed monster cannot activate their effects. What the hell does this do? You have to open map plus a bird plus this card in order to get any value out of it, and all it does is blank, what, ash specifically in a hand that already has map and therefore shouldn't care about it? Context, in Coder Court, I've been telling everyone to buy as many of this card as they can. It was two cents and each of us bought thousands of it for $20. It's gonna be a good card in splites, not game breaking, but still decent. It's now 10 cents, so we've doubled profit. We'll see. So Engraver of the Mark, any time any card designates anything gets bought out. It has been bought out, I wanna say like five or six times. Most recently it was bought out because Crossout Designator was revealed. This card was expected to be very good in the TCG, and it is quite strong, uh, but not good enough that you need to be boarding an Engraver of the Mark to force your opponent to declare a different card name. That's just ridiculous. I've seen some dog cards get bought out. Best ones that come to mind are Chronomaly Nebradisk. Yep, uh, this card was expected to be very good because Chronomalies were decent in the OCG, but we got Nebradisk like five years later, and as a result, the deck had just been crept. And Venatus of the Nordic Ascendant, which was a very powerful normal summon for the Nordic archetype, but of course was not enough to push it into competitive viability. Nebridus peaked around $20 USD, and Venatus was a $40 card! That's terrible. The lack of reading comprehension. Remember when Small World became relevant when people realized they could just search anything? Well, as a result of that, a buy site where a capital I looked a little like a minuscule I on the website. A one platform buyout of Smile World. Imagine being the like speculator who found that. Oh my God, this card is only three cents. Whoo, you'd be a fool not to buy 50,000. Oh man. So Light's Hexsealed Fusion is a monster that allows you to substitute this card for any one fusion material monster, but the other fusion material must be correct. This card was bought out because people were day one labbing combos with branded fusion that allowed you to make Dragoon. Turns out the best thing you can make off of branded fusion are the branded monsters, uh, but YouTube combo theorists were not going to have that, and as a result, speculators drove this to, I believe, about $10 before people realized that it sucks. Bylon Cube! Access code Talker was speculated to be in the 2021 tins. People panicked, sold, and it was way low. Then, when the tin spoiler was revealed and Access Code Talker was not in it, it was bought out overnight and became like a $180 card 
only for Konami to turn around four days later and reveal it was in Mago. It was just the most crazy weekend of turnaround on an individual card I think I've ever seen. So uh, before Dragoon came out, Predator Play and Verity Anaconda did absolutely nothing uh, to the larger metagame. Until one weekend in which an invoked pilot started playing a small Neos fusion package with Rainbow Neos. Almost overnight, every single copy of this card, which comes in Ghost Rare, by the way, was removed from TCG Player as people prepared to find the only playable fusion monster until Dragoon was revealed. This card had a huge buyout because of the progression series! Oh, that's so funny. However, maybe the funniest story of a buyout. So Ad Emancipator was revealed and found out to be extremely good. People were super excited to play the deck. And as a result, uh, speculators had to pick one card to absolutely ruin. Right before the deck was going to start being played, uh, they purchased out every single copy of Ad Emancipator Risen Leonite. Now in their defense, this card was expected to be short printed, uh, but it is one of those weird, beautiful moments in which both the price speculators and Konami have no idea what they're doing. Ad Emancipator Risen Leonite is the only Ad Emancipator that is not playable. There's like seven potential buyout targets and they whiffed them all. This was a $40 card despite seeing zero play because no copies of it were available. Unfortunately, after a couple of weekends, they course corrected and bought out Researcher, which remained a $90 card for almost the entirety of its lifespan. All in all, I guess after viewing these, the conclusion we can all come to is that you know what? Fuck, I'm doing that entire thing again. So that's that. I think if there's one takeaway from this video, it's this. Capitalism is the most effective and equitable system of resource distribution possible. Truly, only the most intelligent, the most deserving, and the most hardworking have the capital to stage buyouts. It's the brain geniuses that <laughs> think Ancient Leaf is going to be tier zero that deserve to have all the money. See you next time. That was shit, go again. Okay, here we go. So that's that. I think if there's one takeaway from this video, it's this. I'm gonna piss.